Welcome to the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm Dr. Terry Schrader. With me today is Dr. Anthony Fauci, Director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the National Institutes of Health. Dr. Fauci has written a perspective article entitled An HIV Vaccine, Challenges and Prospects to be published in the August 28, 2008 issue of the New England Journal of Medicine. Welcome, Dr. Fauci. Thank you, good to be here. First of all, why has the 30-year search for an AIDS vaccine been so unsuccessful? Well, probably the fundamental reason is that HIV is really quite different from any other virus for which we have successfully developed a vaccine. And the difference lies in the fact that the body, in its natural response to natural infection, does not make an adequate or an appropriate immune response to do what virtually every other exposure to other viruses do. And take some examples, smallpox, measles, polio, all of those viruses can kill, they can maim, they can make people seriously ill. But at the end of the day, the body's immune system ultimately clears the virus from the body, eradicates it completely, and allows the body to have protection against subsequent challenge. So nature has already done the experiment to tell us that not only is a vaccine feasible, a vaccine is likely because we know the immune response is capable of doing that. The problem with HIV is that literally in an unprecedented way, HIV does not elicit a protective immune response in the body. And in fact, of the tens of millions of people who've been infected with HIV, there's not a single documented case of someone with established infection who's actually eradicated the virus from the body and the vast, vast, overwhelming majority of people have progressive disease despite an immune response to the virus. So we have to do something that others who do vaccines for other viruses don't have to do. We have to do better than nature. We have to do better than natural infection. And that's a scientific problem that has actually eluded us thus far because we still don't know why the body doesn't make an adequate immune response. And Knowing that, we don't know how to induce an adequate immune response against HIV. Of all the molecular obstacles that the HIV virus presents, is it the biologic diversity that helps it stay really one step ahead of the immune system? It's part of it. It's an important part, but not the only part. The biological diversity, to be sure, because it replicates rapidly and it mutates very often. So what happens is that you have a continually evolving, changing virus, but equally as important, is that even the constant regions of the virus, such as the part that binds to the CD4 receptor, which is the critical step that attaches that particular virus to its vulnerable target, that is a relatively constant region of the virus. That particular region is shielded from the immune system by a variety of ways, by its conformation, as well as by the fact that it has a lot of carbohydrate molecules around it. What we did early on, understandably, was take what's called a classical vaccinology approach. Namely, you have a particular microbe, you have a virus, you have an envelope. So the natural assumption would be that if you put parts of the virus into an animal or into a human, they would develop neutralizing antibodies. So we took an empiric approach and we injected the envelope protein into people. And that turned out to be a failure, a total failure, because it induced antibodies. They had no effect on the virus. None of them were really neutralizing at all in the broad sense. The next phase, based on animal studies, was to say, well, the T cell the limb of the immune response, we know from animal studies, is associated with a dampening of the level of virus replication. It doesn't protect against initial infection, but it keeps the virus replication under control. So the thought was, if we develop a vaccine that would induce a T cell response, that we may be able to lower the viral set point or the level of virus in someone who's infected. Again, that failed. We induced T cell responses. Either they were not the right kind of T cell responses or they weren't the right quantity of T cell responses. Whatever, we still don't know. So we've really reached the point where we have to go back and rely less on an empiric approach and asking some fundamental basic questions that remain unanswered, like why doesn't the body do what you expect it to do, namely make a good neutralizing antibody response against the virus? And 
If it doesn't, which we know it doesn't, how can we induce the body to do it? What is the form in which we're going to be putting an immunogen into a person? We know that there are constant regions on the virus, particularly on the envelope, that some few people, it's uncommon, make a neutralizing antibody that happens to be broadly reactive. So that's right what we want. Very few people make them. There are not a lot of them. So we've made monoclonal antibodies out of that. We know that this monoclonal antibody can bind to this particular binding site. We refer to that as a neutralizing epitope. So the real $64,000 question is, how do you get that neutralizing epitope into an immunogenic form so that when you inject it into someone, it will actually elicit the kind of response that you want to block that particular interaction? And that's where we are now, literally asking some very fundamental basic science questions. Can you talk about some of the failures, in right. particular the Merck vaccine that failed last right. fall? Well, Merck had a vaccine candidate which was called a STEP trial, which was done in collaboration with the NIH with our, our HIV vaccine trial network. And what it was was the use of a particular immunogen. In this case, it was a vector, adenovirus 5, to which the genes of HIV had been inserted, and a person was given multiple injections to try and induce this T-cell response. And the T-cell response that was induced looked reasonable. We didn't know that it wasn't adequate, but it looked like the kind of thing that you would want to induce. Nonetheless, the people who were recipients of the vaccine had no protection with, against infection, which we didn't expect, but in a very disappointing way, had no effect at all on the level of virus of what we call the set point. So the first real attempt at developing a T-cell vaccine was quite disappointing. What was the Partnership for AIDS Vaccine Evaluation, and why was it stopped? Well, that is a group that did a trial, and, and, and the trial was called PAVE 100. And they were getting ready to go into a phase 2B, which was a, a, a size equivalent to what the Merck STEP trial was, done in thousands of people, about 8,000 people. They had some similarities in that the immunological response that was elicited by STEP compared to the PAVE trial were somewhat different, but not overwhelmingly different. So the issue was that if you're going to use a product in a vaccine trial, should you make it such a large trial that even if the trial fails to give you the endpoint that you want, that you'd be able to get a subgroup analysis of people who look like they respond and see if you can do an immunological correlate. And the decision that I made was that if the trial doesn't do what it is you want it to do, then you don't need immunological correlates. It's not going to tell you much. So I rejected the PAVE trial as designed, and I asked for the investigators to come back with a much smaller trial that would be powered only to ask the question, does it or does it not reduce the viral set point? Is it possible that we will never have an HIV vaccine in the classic yeah. sense? Well, no, it is. I say that and people get anxiety reactions because they, some of them say, well, then you're giving up on it. I'm not giving up. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic and we will continue to push and push and push. But I think one would have to be unrealistic to think that there's no possibility that we won't have a vaccine. There is a possibility that we will not develop a vaccine in the classic sense. And I, we have to be aware of that possibility.